All right, well, you and I have kind of been waiting with bated breath for the past two or three weeks uh, for the results of this study, which we all knew was being conducted up in Santa Clara County. Um, what do you make of this? I mean, this is, this is a much higher, an average of a 3% incidence rate compared to what we knew before. Yeah, I, look, I mean, we've speculated this, particularly in California. And as you said, you know, with the amount, total amount of cases based on this random sampling, it's our first actual random sampling case. We see that the uh, case fatality rate has dropped to comparable to the flu on the, that's on the low end. Uh, uh, you know, even on the high end, it's at what, 0.14%. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we're really looking at, flu, you know, a flu type illness here in the, in the case of, in case fatality rates. And we also get that because there's a high test positivity rate, meaning one in five people who are tested for this tend to be uh, test positive, and those are people with showing symptoms. We see that in uh, Iceland, 50% of the people have, were asymptomatic. Uh, there's an aircraft carrier in France, 936 uh, of those sailors were te uh, had tested positive, more than half were asymptomatic. So I think there's more, uh, I think we, you know, this is far more widespread than we saw, which brings down the case fatality rate. Moreover, that adds to herd immunity overall. Yeah, and I, I think, I, I know the other side, the pro-lockdown people from the get-go have for some reason banned any comparison to COVID-19, of COVID-19 to the flu. And I, I, I'm not sure why, because there are valid comparisons that need to be made in certain instances, and this is one of them. So if you look at the data from the 2017-2018 flu season, there were 44 million people that were estimated to be symptomatic that year. 22 million of them went to the doctor, 800,000 of them uh, were hospitalized, 61,000 of them died, which brings a case fatality rate, 61,000 deaths divided by 44 million people who were infected, that is a case fatality rate for that season of 0.14%. That is the identical case fatality rate of what's being calculated in this randomized study in Santa Clara, California. Yeah, and look, a lot of this has to go with coding as well. If you look at New York City, the uh, health minister there said that, you know, excess deaths were 3,000. Um, preliminary data came out on excess deaths in all the United States, and it didn't show uh, any excess deaths for uh, uh, this year so far. I mean, this is just preliminary data. It could come out and show later that there were excess deaths. But look, you know, this is important information to have, judging by policies moving forward. A lot of people are saying now, oh, we'll expect another wave, expect another wave. But what they never qualify is that in most places, there's never been a first wave or a first wave or that we know of. if there was, about. the places right. didn't know it. That, that's exactly. what the speculation has been about California itself, not just Santa Clara County, but the entire state that perhaps, perhaps we experienced the first wave and just didn't differentiate it from a bad or early flu season. We thought it was just another respiratory illness. And perhaps in a sense it was because one of the things that we were told about COVID-19 is that it was going to overwhelm our healthcare system, right? That hospitals mm -hmm. were going to be overflowing. It would lead to rationing. We were going to have to have do not resuscitate orders, deny people ventilators. None of that has happened, by the way. But that was based on a projection rate of 15% of those who contracted the virus would need to be hospitalized According to this study from Santa Clara County, if these numbers are extrapolated and it's a randomized study, so it can be extrapolated, that would be a hospitalization rate of 2%.